Right, hello, you join me at a deserted Liberty Stadium. It's uh, very late now. We've just uh, spoken to Darren Moore and Graham Potter after the game. Um, and I think one manager was a lot happier than the other because uh, his tactics paid off, and that was Darren Moore. Um, if you didn't see the game or didn't catch the game, essentially, uh, Swansea took the lead after 10 minutes through a nice goal from Molly McBurney. Sam Johnson parried a shot uh, beforehand that, that fell into his path. Might have done better with the shot. Um, but nicely tucked away from McBurney for his eighth of the season. But Albion hit back straight away. Three minutes later, Craig Dawson with a looping header at the far post. And that was going to become a theme for the game um, as Matt Phillips sent pretty much all his corners towards the far post, whether it was fizzed or, or, or swung in. Um, and they took the lead just on the stroke of half time with another corner towards the back post uh, where Craig Dawson, uh, sorry, where Ahmed Higazi this time nodded in. So both centre backs scoring for Albion tonight. And they both played pretty well uh, at the other end as well. Um, but after the game, Darren Moore explained that that was a, uh, a weakness that they they hoped to exploit uh, in the, in this Swansea team. Uh, they knew they were they were poor with uh, men driving to the back post, and and they knew they had um, some 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 good headers of the ball in in that team, particularly Dawson and Higazi. Obviously, it's down to Phillips to deliver the ball, and it's down to those those two defenders to to meet it. Um, but he was delighted that his little innovation paid off. Potter's uh, tactical switch was to play um, a, a, a wing-back system. He moved to a back five, played three centre-backs, and he put Martin Olsen on the left wing-back and Conor Robertson right wing-back. And particularly in the first half, I felt like that was a really good move from him because um, Martin Olsen, in particular, down this left-hand side, was having the run of it. Um, Tosin Adarabai looked pretty isolated at right-back. Albion's narrow 4-3-3 was being exposed slightly, and um, it was uh, it was Olsen and Chilina and uh, I think it was James as well coming in and really putting him under pressure and, and um, Swansea could have had a bit more joy down there really uh, in the first half but at half time Darren Moore made a little bit of a tactical switch he dropped Rodriguez a bit further back um, to help out in midfield which allowed um, the other mid the, the, the three midfielders Phillips Morrison and uh, Livermore just to spread out a little bit more um, they, they packed the midfield a little bit more um, Rodriguez and, and, and Barnes were, went a little bit wider as well um, just to sort of nullify that that threat in the second half, I thought they were they were brilliant to be honest. Um, off the ball, fantastic to a man. Game management management was superb. They really took the sting out of the game. Um, and although Swansea did have a, a bit of a penalty appeal when when the ball seemed to strike Dawson's arm, his arm was down by his side, but it did seem to lean into it. Um, it could have been given on another day. Um, but I think Adam were, were well worth their victory here. Although Swansea may have been the better side in the first half. I think the way that Albion managed the game in the second half was um, was very encouraging, um, essentially, because this was a sort of gritty away win um, that promotion charges are built on. Um, you know, Swansea, lest we forget, came down with Albion last season. They played some nice stuff under Graham Potter at times this uh, this season. Um, he seems to be building quite a nice team down here. I thought Ollie McBurney looked very good. Leroy Fur um, played really well in midfield. They had a couple of other nice flashes from from some of their, their decent young players. Um, but Albin just had that little edge, that little experience and maybe a bit more physicality to get them over the line. Um, and this 4-3-3 that Darren Moore has been playing is um, it's working really well at the moment. That's three wins from three. Um, and proof of how, how well it's working is that he didn't make a substitute until the 87th minute now. But around the, around the hour mark, around 65 minutes, I thought it's, it's time to get some fresh legs on the pitch. Um, but he no, he, he decided not to. And to be fair to him, the whole... Uh, team seemed to get a collective second wind and um, they played much better in the second half and really kept Swansea at arm's length from, from the majority of it. Um, a really solid win, solid three points. It leaves them in fourth place, just three points off the top. Um, and now we're on a bit of a run now and they've got five days uh, now to recover. Uh, that, that game against Brentford being moved to a Monday night actually might play into their hands a little bit because you know two long trips to Ipswich and Swansea, they'll be pretty knackered after tonight, especially those players that played um, 90 minutes in both those games, but they've got a long, a long time to recover now. You know, five days is, is plenty of time to be honest. So um, I, I imagine they'll they'll have tomorrow off, or they'll just be doing recovery work, um, and then they'll have uh, Friday off. I imagine, then they're back in Saturday and Sunday training ahead of that game against Brentford, which of course sets up a really big week for the for the club because after Brentford at home on Monday, um, next Friday it's Aston Villa at home, and uh, who knows? It could be five all. We we'll wait and see. All right, thanks for that. Enjoy your trip home. Good night.